uh, decompile. So I'm assuming it's C sharp then. Nice. I'm not a I'm not a big gamer like that type of gamer. I'm I'm a high um a first person type guy. Modern warfare and uh mech games and stuff like that. But that's some cool stuff and I always try to get my kids into modding the games I figured maybe they'll like it and start programming. <laughs> I only have one programmer in the house with me. Grost. JM Grost. What's up man? Thanks for coming. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Welcome. Thank you for coming by. Cool, cool. Yeah, um, sure, the actions and the funks. So we can... Let me see if I have any of them in this project. If not, we'll we'll start up something and we'll um Michelle. Yes. Hello. <laughs> yes. Welcome. It's been a it's been a long time. I started streaming about a month ago. Continually again. It's caught up in a project. All right, cool. Um, yeah, gross. Let me uh see if I have any actions and funks in here, and um, I'll explain to you and see if we can at least um get a little bit a little bit of um extra stuff for you. So why is it not finding in the solution? So I have one funk here. Oh, awesome. In the same exact file. Did you by any chance check out um Jeremy's YouTube channel? I learned a lot about lambdas and delegates on that channel. Uh there's lots of others also, but that was one of the main ones and uh the way he explained it and the way he went through it helped me out quite a bit. In here? No, I don't want a whole bunch of other kids in here. Okay, how about that? Kids want to invite friends over. Gotta, gotta know them first. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, let's find where, where this is used. Okay, excellent. So here we have... um an add force command so this is used to move the the player on the X Y and Z direction um, and in order to move the player on each specific direction you need to know whether you're moving it on the X Y or Z so I use the funks here so funks um, let me explain. These are just dele delegates. They're, you know, you can write your own delegate. Um, these are just provided by the C Sharp library. And the difference between a func and an action is uh, an action does not return a type. So an action is void. It can take parameters and it's uh, void return type. Funks have a return type. So in this call to the func delegate it's accepting a float and it's returning a, v a vector 3 likewise I can write my own delegate you can of course name it whatever we want and we pass in the parameters right? and we assign a return type so I can write my own on take return type on a I'm sorry <laughs> I can write my own funk to mimic this exact exact behavior and if you notice in my code there's no errors right is the so that means that the arguments 
that come in and go out, they match precisely. If I change this to an in integer, for instance, and you look in my code here, there's, there's red, so it's saying that the parameters do not match, or the return type. Uh, I didn't actually read the, the error, so it says here the inv has invalid arguments. So that's what the delegates are. They're just ways of assigning methods to, to variables. So you can pass actual methods around as um as data, and it comes in really handy for in for this instance. So you don't func and action are optional. Um, you can create your own method, your own delegate. But I the system already has is precisely what I need, and. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I create my own, depending on what mood I'm in or how I see it matching matching the code. So here we're passing in a func that takes a float and returns a vector for movement. And here we have one that takes a vector and returns a float. So we can pass in, these are called lambda expressions. And lambda expressions is just a fancy way for saying an anonymous method. And if you notice here, this is a method. It it takes a parameter, or or not. It depends depend on how I um, write the delegate. And it it does something. Uh, if it was one that returned the type, it will return it in this um, this line of code here. So an easy lambda, as this one is, um, I can try to read through the structure of it for you, so you can see how it plays out at least in this line this argument is the second argument for movement so we have the argument that's the not argument I'm sorry the value that's passed in as the argument and it's expecting a float and here we are right here and it's expecting a vector 3 to be returned the lambdas are really succinct in the fact that I don't need to say return the vector 3. So that's what this lambda actually does. It takes a return type, it evaluates the expression. All right, th I can't remember what this um, is called, but it's used to, to denote lambdas. And it returns, it's very important here, it returns a new vector 3. This one takes a value and it uses the value in here the value that it's taking is a vector 3 so we're able to parse out the vector 3 for instance here you have all the values that a vector 3 takes now just like I can create my own delegate I don't need to pass in a lambda expression I can create my own method that can be used in this particular case I didn't because I, I would need one, two, three different methods. So lambda seemed to be the best choice for this particular instance. So let's just create a method that we can pass in as a, to evaluate instead of using the lambda expression here. So for the this is for the the z um, parameter on the vec on the vector the z property. So we know what we want to do. We want to take a vector and we want to return, well we'll do the second parameter. We want to accept a float and return a vector 3. So instead of defining delegate as we did the first time, we're just going to define a, a regular method. So we know we need to return a vector 3. So we can just call this my z move, And we take a float. Oops. Val, num, it can be called whatever you want. I'm doing all the crazy names just to, in case um, someone's not sure as if something needs to be named add force to actually add force. You know, it could be named anything. It's it's your choice. You usually see see things named, and it, they almost look like oh, I guess it 
this function adds force well yeah it does because you choose a name that makes sense so when you read through it it can make sense so now we need to return a vector 3 so I we can do okay and instead of actually doing this in this method I'm gonna take it out Let's pretend it's not here we can pass in our move my move so again the red goes away because it's a valid method to pass in as that parameter it takes a, a float as an argument and it returns a vector 3 so in order to make this method actually work with my code I can replace all the values here so now this will actually work with my code with no changes so I can save it and play and I would see no effect no change in my code now the reason for the lambda in this is um, reason like I said I would need to have three separate methods here that does the same thing and I can pass them in to the in the appropriate place so X move Y move and Z move so using lambdas here looks confusing but if you can if you understand how to read through the actual expression it um it can save you a lot of a lot of lines of code um maintaining a lot of things on on the outside i'll never be using this anywhere else i only need to return a vector with the z value set so i, I do it right here inline in code Um, cool hopefully that kind of clears things up uh, uh, vector not vectors lambda expressions delegates all these things they're they're pretty pretty confusing but just imagine that uh, delegate is, is just a reference like I here's my float I'm assigning a one to to this float I create my delegate and I, I'm assigning this method to the delegate just a way of, of uh, moving data around and the data in this instance is not a very is not a value like uh, one or string it's an actual method now hopefully um, you can recognize the the power that this can provide to a developer when you can define a method in, as an argument that can do something different once it gets into the argument Right, so all of these are pass are actual methods that's being passed in that do something different. All right, cool. So um, I've got these commands that um I pulled out of our player. Let me find our player. There's the player controller. So the player controller used to listen for all these events and respond to them. It no longer does. The Twitch spawner is responsible now when it instantiates a player, uh, the ball in, in our instance, it gets the Twitch monitor and it adds a, a listener to the Twitch command. These I'm sure work. These two are the ones that I'm working on. These two are will help actually facilitate the transfer from uh, an one of our type of args that Twitch our Twitch client uses to things that Unity are more familiar with, um, basic types, strings, integers, uh, and floats. Take a brief look at the chat. Yeah, that's that. That's uh, knowing when to use them is is where it w it will save you uh, quite a bit of of time and a and effort. 
um, and uh, practicing with them is very, very necessary. Um, as I was ex learning to use the Lambda Expressions, I produced a video on YouTube. I don't know if you bumped into that one particularly, but uh, I, s I figured I can now refactor my code, like you saw, and make it easier to understand and easier to change if I use these new Lambda Expressions and Delegates. So I started on that path. And during the code, um, I noticed that it was broken halfway through and I made adjustments to fix it. I was still a little confused as to why it wasn't working, but I fixed it and I got it up to snuff and it worked and I, and I put the video out on YouTube and on Reddit, I got a reply that said that I didn't just refactor code. Refactoring code means you're just, it's going to be the same thing, but you're making it cleaner. You're, you're taking out redundancies and all these type of different things, but the code performance should be exactly the same exactly being the key term here and me noticing something was wrong with my code was exactly that I changed the code when I used the lambda expression and that was just from ignorance and learning how and what I did wrong so on reddit they pointed out that I didn't just refactor the code I changed the code so I immediately went back to see what I did wrong and where I did, and I, and I understood what happened. So I, I left a link back to his explanation and stuff of what happened in the code. They are difficult to grasp, but when you do grasp them, it opens up a whole new, a whole new um, world. So I'm on all the time uh, at this particular time, and that's what I try to do when I stream. I don't. I try not to use the simplest form of solving a problem. I try to use the one that I think can. And oftentimes it, it ends up being uh, intermediate type of coding to advanced level coding. So you can stop by every once in a while and maybe you'll pick something up. And don't be shy if you, you know, if you learn something that you'd want to share, um, go ahead and share it because you never know. You know, maybe the next person listening in might not, might not know. So that's how I use it in uh in my code. And it I, I I use delegates all the time. Um, it's just a way of of moving data around. And from the minute I got familiar with them, it seems to be the only way, in particular instance, that you can get done what you want to get done. Of course, there's other ways because delegates never didn't exist from the beginning. 